All right, we're good. We're live, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I really wanted this to work on Facebook Live, and I will not tell you how many times I tried this week to not get it to work, that I couldn't get it to work. And I tried to contact the support at Zoom, and I was like number 300 in the queue <laughs> every time I went on there, if, whether it was night, day, whatever. So I really tried my best to make it work. But anyway, I am so happy to have my friends with me today. We have David Howard or D David Hayward, aka the Naked Pastor, NakedPastor.com. We have John Howie and my friend Emily Kester Kesterson. Always mess up. Got it. Uh, so we have two Canadians, two Americans. It sounds like a great start of a joke. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, being with me. Do what? I didn't know David was Canadian. Oh yeah, yeah you you guys are right there somewhere. Where where do you live, David? I live in St. John, New Brunswick. Oh, okay. The other right. side. I have not been there. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I'm, I'm near Calgary. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Every time I hear that, I've I think of Calgary. So you guys are on opposite yes. ends, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I'm not quite. Miles apart. I'm not quite all the way west, but yeah, pretty close. Yeah. Oh, so so if so, give me me and Emily terms that we would understand. I think it's it, David lives above Maine ish. Yeah. There we go. And then and then John lives above Wa. Uh, I like Montana. Monta yeah, Montana. Yeah, Montana. I, I thought you were gonna say east and west is something Americans don't use. I'm like, you guys <laughs> in your crazy <laughs> units for everything. I'll tell you yeah. what, east and west, I struggle. I struggle with it, so it might be an American thing. <laughs> And so far, we're protected by a border that's not protected. So that's pretty <laughs> How does that make you feel? Isn't, isn't Trump sending the military, though? That's, that's what he said. And Trudeau's all like, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's happening yeah, or that's not. That's really very smart. Maybe we'll come to our senses. It's not said. a good use of our military. Let's talk about that. Stopping well, Canadians? What is the point? I don't know one Canadian who wants to go back. <laughs> no, no, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, no, no offense, guys. Just I'm not offended. I'm coming up to you guys before too long. Yeah, you, you, you never hear about Canada. It never comes on the nightly news. Never. No. We still exist, though. I, I you guys are like foreigners to me. I'm like, is it kind of reminds me of the UP, like of of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, where there's just like a lot of Mormons and everybody's like really far apart, and there's just a lot of like snowmobiling, like. <laughs> Um, <laughs> did anybody see uh, Tiger King this week? I did. I binged yes. watched it. Yeah. You did not. I did. <laughs> it was like watching a freaking accident. Did Lisa watch it with you? No. She's from Alabama and she's like, oh yeah, that's just what happened. Oh, <laughs> well, well, last week we learned that Emily's family hoards the toilet paper, so nothing was new there for her. No, they're the doomsday preppers. <laughs> Not, not even kidding. Like that's not even that's not even like an exaggeration. And that's just yeah. the way you grew up. It is, yeah. So I naturally just keep hordes of toilet paper in my house. Just that makes sense to me. Yeah, just in case. That would be a sweet name for a band, Doomsday Preppers. <laughs> would, yeah. I'm gonna I'm make a note of that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, no, no Tiger King for me or whatever it is. I don't have time for that. I I, I couldn't. Uh, it was like. Uh, it was like a, a, a mind fuck shit show. <laughs> That's what it was for me. Like I, couldn't, I couldn't believe what I was watching. What it's, is it's it? It's quite the tagline. <laughs> mind fuck what? What is the show? Like, what is it about? It's about, it? it's about people in the States uh, who have exotic animals, uh, especially tigers and... Um, just, I, I can't even begin to describe it. And, and just, just how, how messed up they are and uh, everybody's on meth and um, they're, they're selling the, the animals in the black yeah, it, market and they're, yeah. um, they've got multiple partners and they're, um, oh my God. they're, they're misogynist pigs and they yes uh, and and they get rid of their their spouses disappear nobody knows where they are 
or the bodies or it's like oh my god tiger people and and they start and they start it like this tiger people are some of the most unique people it's it's a specific class of people but it was, it's you need I mean, some positive spin yeah whether <laughs> it's it's, it's it, hey we're we're live now it finally worked. I hope it sticks. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to Just gonna don't even talk about it. Just don't even talk, talk about it. it. We will not acknowledge yes. the live. <laughs> so, so now that we're said, live, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. John. Yeah, well, now that we're live, I want to introduce everybody one more time. Okay. We have top okay. left, Emily Kesterson, or Kes. Yes, you got it. You got it. Okay. Don't do Kesterson it again. Kesterson from mm -hmm. Michigan. Yeah. Myself, Kevin, David Hayward, a.k.a. Naked Pastor, down at the bottom left. He's in Canada. This is John in Canada. For once, they get to see what it's like to be at the bottom. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, I'm glad everybody's joining us. What I wanted to do today was to um, create an opportunity for people that don't have a church home. And I'm not, yeah, they don't have a church home or don't have anything to do or they're worried with the quarantine. Just an hour or two of stress relief and really hear everything that David has to say about his cartoon, um, his cartoon series called Sophia. You can go on Kindle right now and uh, purchase The Liberation of Sophia for $9.99. I did it yesterday. And you can flip through all the drawings and each drawing has its own corresponding um, writing. Meditation. Meditation. There we go. That sounds mm -hmm. good. And uh, so, so anyway, um, my idea for the show today was us to get into that and talk about Sophia and Tiger King and Joe Exotic and um, polygamy and hoarders <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, really, and really talk about the liberation of Sophia. And um, uh, David, will you just give us an idea of what the liberation of Sophia is and then we'll kind sure. of go from there. Uh, so yeah, I, this, this is the book. I, this is the Spanish version, La Liberación de Sophia because I keep giving away my English versions, but it is in Spanish too, so that's kind of cool. But, uh, and it's, it's full of drawings with, a, like you say, a corresponding meditation. And so I left the ministry in 2010. Uh, at a, in about 2012, I'd been an artist before I was painting and things like that, but in 2012, I, I, drew, a paint, I drew a picture of a girl holding up a teddy bear to a grizzly bear towering over her. And I, I had no idea where that came from. I'd never drawn anything like that before. And every week or two after that, I, I continued drawing these situations of a woman or a young woman or a girl in, in the wilderness all by herself. Usually there's a full moon in the picture. Uh, maybe, maybe there's two other. full moons. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. two full moons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Uh, Dad life. Me a minute. Yeah, she, yeah. she is, she is naked, but I think it's pretty PG. Nothing you couldn't yeah. see in a magazine or whatever. I mean, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, David, do tell. Um, so it's, it's pretty uh, tasteful. Let's put it that way. Sure. So <clears throat> after about, uh, after several of the drawings, I started to realize I was drawing my own journey. Uh, from feeling trapped in the church and and leaving the church and the ministry and all the all the oppression I felt under the whole religious structure and beliefs and all that kind of thing and uh, eventually I ended up with sixty three um, drawings and all of them uh, it's about Sophia I call her Sophia which is the Greek word for wisdom. But also she represents my soul, let's say, my spirit's endeavor to be, to be free and liberated from all that stuff. So it, it goes everywhere from her being trapped in a cellar in the basement to, um, you know, walking into the light as an angel kind of thing. So that Can is, I comment on that real quick? Yeah, I think yeah. it's so cool that... Because to me, when I when I look at at this work, I think, oh, you're describing what a woman would have gone through in the church. But what you're really describing is a part of you. And yeah. I love that because we 
everybody has a feminine and a masculine right. part of them. And so right. you're not afraid to embrace the feminine mm. aspects of your soul, of your personality. And it just, and I love that there's not very men out, many men out there that are willing to say, I have feelings, I have emotions, yeah. I have a feminine side, yeah. you know, yeah. and I, I just yeah. think that's so cool. There's no shame in that for you. You're just like, yeah, this is my soul. And well, I'm like, as a woman that you never see that. Yeah. So Carl Jung talked about the anima and the animus. So the, the male has the feminine aspect, the anima, and the female has the male aspect, the animus. So I was studying that way, way back. And, um, you know, in your dreams, the woman that appears in your dreams is the female aspect of your person talking to a man. Uh, when a woman would appear in my dreams, she was a female aspect of my personality and so on and so forth. And um, so I, this was familiar to me. Mm -hmm. So that when, when um, I, I began to realize, actually it was when I drew the picture cave, Sophia standing before a cave and should she go in or not? Because the cave represents very intense personal, like your uh, struggle with yourself and going deep. And, um, and so uh, I, that's when I realized I was drawing my own journey uh, represented by a woman, which is my, my, it was my desire to be free. And it was expressed through that whole female aspect. Yeah. So I have some women who are like, I can't believe you wrote this as a man. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, it's just, it was, it wasn't difficult. See, I would expect, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I think, so I'm sorry, let me try this again. What's more unusual, a woman understanding her, her manhood, because I feel like that's what women have kind of had to fight for, of course. Yeah. Is, is that more difficult or is it more difficult for a man to understand his, his womanhood, his feminine side? Yeah, I, I have I, I had a friend who um, well, I was trying to talk with us about him, and he was very, very defensive and offended, and all this kind of thing—a real kind of macho guy. And I said, "You're, you're just one chromosome away from being a woman," and he freaked mm. out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just science, but I mean, yeah, he out and got all insecure and thought I was calling him gay, and mm. I don't know. I think for me, my journey has been coming out of that masculine that I was, I say, forced into, but out of survival, that was the safe place to be, was in this, and I call it my, sorry for the kids watching, my fuck you <laughs> mode, where I was just like on edge, I was ready to fight, I was angry, but what was really coming through was just so much masculinity, and I had, I was completely detached from my femininity when that was what was trying to, it wasn't safe for my feminine side to come out because that was looked down upon. Uh, emotions were, um, uh, were weakness. And oh, wow. so it, big time. So I was full on in my masculine. And so then of course I attracted somebody that was in his feminine because that was the only way that would have worked. Hmm. And so there was just dysfunction from the root because that was stemming from me. And so I, from my perspective, <clears throat> I would say, they're equally as difficult because it is so celebrated for a woman to be in her masculine in the business huh. world in in the sexual world too, because porn is very masculine. It's very yeah. much uh, what the, what the man would want. There's no femininity and like purity in, in that. And that's celebrated. You got like Kim Kardashian and Cardi B and that's very masculine. There's nothing feminine about that. So, mm. but equally for a man, it is not celebrated to be in touch with your emotions either and to be mm -hmm. in touch with your soul and like to really, so I don't know. I would say it's equal parts. Everybody's disconnected from their identity. That's so interesting. Yeah, go ahead. John. Yeah, Sorry. I, I just, it, it's funny how like I have this sense that toxic masculinity pervades everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, obviously it's bad for women. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. we've talked, you know, people have talked so much about that. And it's, I think it's interesting to look at how the, it's bad for men too. Yeah. Um, and it's mm -hmm. like you're, I guess, what is it? You're repressing part of yourself mm -hmm. in order to try to fit this mold of what masculinity should look like. Mm -hmm. And it's just interesting to me. Like I've been thinking a lot about how like if people could just be who they are, if we could just liberate people to be who they are and stop placing gender expectations on them, mm -hmm. I think we would live in a world where people are mentally a lot more healthy. So, uh, uh, David, I almost said, so naked pastor. So David, um, 
the um so 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 your journey to become free the liberation of sophia is you depicted as as sophia a woman so is the journey to become free the journey to see your feminine side as a man and for a woman to see your well is is it to appreciate both sides is that part of the journey no matter where the journey is from or what institution it's from or yeah well i um emily and john were were um, you know talking about that just then where the the oppression of and and the silencing of of women it it's also exercised against the ex, the the expression of of your feelings or emotion or tenderness or caring or um, speaking out, using your voice, finding your voice, um, exercising your rights, all those things. Like even though I was I was in the church for many years, and even though I was a pastor for many of those those years, I felt I felt in many ways silenced and controlled, and that I had expectations upon me. And um, I wasn't allowed to be authentically me. And, um, you know, I, I, if I were going to, if I was going to find my voice and use my voice, it had to be in accordance with blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, th that's why the liberation of Sophia is the story of a woman's liberation, but it's also the story of my liberation of my deepest, truest self with you know, the feminine expression and the masculine expression and, and all that. It's really the, um, so when I left the church and the ministry and all that, I felt really, really free. But the really cool thing was I felt free to be totally me, who I was and all of my expression. I could use, I could say whatever I wanted. I could do whatever yeah. I wanted. And That's um, great. yeah, nobody, nobody could say, wait, you're not allowed to do that. We pay you. And yeah. this is what we expect or what we want. And so that I was free of all that. It's like so, finding authenticity, true authenticity. Um, it, it's so much deeper than the feminine and the masculine. It's like just embracing who you are yeah. and being free to be who you are, yeah. however that comes out. Yes. And I think that that is the big thing. Like um, that's my journey has been just being myself and being the same person in every, around every single person I'm around. And it takes practice. It takes like, right giving myself the freedom to practice that and to like, you know, fully release that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can't do that when you're caged in uh, mm -hmm. uh, with a bunch of rules. Um, and David, you and I have talked about how I kind of viewed it as a grace bubble that you yeah. have this grace bubble in, and within mm -hmm. your bubble, you can bounce around and you can maybe do, try a little yeah. of this and a little of that, but God is in that and God is protecting you and you're, you know, but you go outside of that bubble and God's not there and he's never going to be there. And there's really no coming back and you've crossed the line. And right. so that for me was terrifying because I'm like, I have crossed mm -hmm. the line and there's no coming back. And I'm like uh -uh. in this, in this totally unknown, but that's really where the freedom was. And, and like you say, yeah. David, the liberation. And, so and that's a perception though, right? That, that God is this grace bubble when in yes. reality, yeah. God is ubiquitous. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. freedom was there the entire time. Yeah. And, and mm. I've heard Emily talk about this. Is, is she says mm. that one day that your father mentioned to you, Emily, you have the power, mm -hmm. just like you had the power to get yourself into this situation. Yeah. You have the power to get out. Yeah. It's mm. all, it's, it's almost all in your head. It's and, all, and, it's all this thing you've created, this like yes. reality you've created based on your own experiences and your own fears. And you've created this just, and David, you and I talked about this too. It's like, we're all just viewing the world through our own lens. And if we just step outside of that and realize like, this is so much bigger than yeah. any of us can see. And, yeah. and then you can give your other people freedom then to be themselves. Yeah. That's why I talk, I talk about this a lot um, because I, uh, I, I help people deconstruct and, you know, if they're leaving the church or changing their beliefs and all that kind of thing. And one of the things that, and um, right now, by the way, I'm little promo, it's free, yeah. but I'm, I'm actually <laughs> reading through um, this book um, on my David Hayward courses or naked pastor courses.com. And um, I've got 10 reads so far, but I'm just showing you the picture and reading through these things and then giving a commentary on what's behind each drawing. And one of the things I keep coming back to is the whole concept of, of freedom. It's, 
I, I realized, I learned this several years ago, was that um, it was way back when I was in the Presbyterian Church. This is when I first realized what was happening. And I was a pastor in the Presbyterian Church. And I, 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 I suddenly realized that I hated my job. I hated mm -hmm. life. I, I was just so unhappy. And I felt so hopeless. And I went to bed. And that night I had a dream. And all I heard was the words, it's time. Uh, <laughs> and I, I woke up laughing. I, I, I woke up laughing hysterically. Lisa started laughing. My kids all came running in, and they were all younger at the time. They all came running in and jumped on the bed, and they all started laughing. And I said, <laughs> honey, we're free. We, we can do whatever we want. And, yeah. and the thing was, I, I thought I was trapped because I was afraid of living free. I was afraid of the consequences or the ramifications of just walking away. I'd lose our yeah. house, our income. What yeah, we do it with my wife and kids, their schools and moving and all their stuff, right? It was the consequences that I was afraid of. And that's what kept me trapped. So when I realized that, was that I felt we, we embarked on the, one of the most craziest, funnest adventures of our life. <laughs> mm. We finally realized we were free. Nobody was holding a gun to our heads. It was just our fear that was keeping us in. So that's what this whole book is about. Sophia is her realizing and exercising her freedom in spite of the consequences and the ramifications of her acting free. And isn't it interesting though, because we're taught, we really are taught, I mean, everybody can attest to this that's grown up in the church. You're taught that there are consequences to your actions and yeah. it's terrifying. And the mm -hmm. consequences are really, really bleak. They're really scary. And so that's enough to cripple you, to like cage you in because it's right. just all built on fear. And what I had to let go of that, um, doing something to get the, to reap the benefit or not doing something to avoid the consequence. Cause in my mind, God was consequences or miracles, mm -hmm. like consequences, yeah. you know, and I had to walk away from that. And I, we talked about the heaven and the hell thing. My, it was crippling to me to, to walk away from the belief that there may not be a heaven or a hell, because again, I'm not going to heaven then. And that's my consequence. And then once I got past that fear, I was like, well, that was stupid. Like that wasn't <laughs> real, but you're, it's ingrained in you. And it really is on a soul level terrifying. Well, yeah. whenever the, um, whenever Rob Bell came out with this book, I, I, I know the idea had already been presented for what, 2000 years or something uh, of there not being a hell. But when he came out of that book, when Rob Bell came storm. out with his book, it was a shit storm. It was, and it was like, mm -hmm. people were so angry, the yes. idea of there not being a hell. I'm yes. like, really? <laughs> That's what I grew up in. I grew up hearing about how Rob Bell was so terrible and that, of course, there's a hell. And I'm like, well, fuck yeah. me. Like, it's terrifying. It's absolutely and I, terrifying. And it's funny because I'm still in the church. I'm still, you know, in a pretty conventional kind of area. But I mean, like for me, um, even, you know, like I, when I, when I hear David talking about ministry and everything like that, I felt the call to ministry as a young man. And it was kind of this ongoing thing where I was like, well, I'm not living my ministry I was supposed to be doing. And it took me a while to realize that it's like, what I'm, what I'm doing is uncaged and I'm supposed to be uncaged and ministry would have caged me. Um, and so when you talk about like hell, I'm still kind of like, I don't know, maybe there is a hell, but I don't really need it, need there to be a hell. <laughs> and it bothers me that so many people need there to be a hell. Yeah. I'm like, you know, like I, I think there's heaven and if there is, I'm going there. And if not, I just cease to exist and I'm cool with that too. Right. Like, and I'm, I'm just kind of at a weird place with everything. I'm just like, yeah, it's all good. But it's you so know? peaceful. Just pursuing love, man. Let's just, and I love what David said in his book, about like on his deathbed, you know, yeah. he wants to be able to be at peace mm -hmm. and to love everyone and to forgive everyone. Even if, even if they don't love him or forgive him, yes. he says, I'm going to, uh, and, and it's almost like the way that you want to live. I'm assuming David, yeah. like every day there's a dying to yourself of saying with, even if you don't love me back, I'm going to release my grudges, mm -hmm. release my pain. And I think it's a beautiful way. And it's moving into the unknown. Mm -hmm. And and so and so my question is I, I I know that a lot of us through deconstruction and leaving the church and belief systems have experienced some or all or part of what you're talking about. Have you coached or worked with people that have used it in the corporate world or used it in their relationships or any other facet of life? Used what? 
the the whole li- the liberation of Sophia, almost oh. the um, hero's journey that you're talking about. Have they have you talked with them and 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 they say, well, I didn't leave the church. I never really had issues with with the church or with my beliefs, but I have I do see the value in this in other yeah. ways. Yeah, I have I have coached different people who or have heard from people who um, have used it in their especially especially women. Uh, I think I told the story in in the course recently where I got an email from a, a young woman who who said um, uh, I was really unhappy. I felt trapped. Um, mm-hmm. and I heard about the Liberation of Sophia books. She said I ordered it. I quit college. I left home living with my parents and I, I got a tent and a sleeping bag. I went out into the woods. <laughs> she went wow. camping for, in the mountains for a couple of months and just wow, the way awesome. through Sophia and wow. came like a different person. And I was like, that is really cool. No reference to the church or anything like that. Although I'm yeah. sure that might've been involved, but just, just, uh, you know, because this, this freedom thing applies to so many. And when I, when I'm talking with people, it, it also it could refer to the church, it could refer to leaving the ministry, but it also could refer to leaving a really toxic marriage, yeah, or a really controlling family, or a really sucky job, or anything like that, or maybe the town you're living in just sucks and you just want to get away, or you know whatever. And it's just it it's just talks. It's about you taking the step, realizing you're not trapped. Very very seldom. You know, I know there are cases where people really do feel trapped and in many ways they kind of are and it would be dangerous for them to walk away from that situation. Right. But most people I've talked with are, they're just afraid of the consequences uh, and the responsibility and, and the work and the ramifications of walking away and figuring out life from scratch. And, uh, but I, I see people do it and, and they're just, you know, I really admire those people. So it's always a fear of, of the unknown. I mean, I know that's obvious, but, yeah. but, but, but I'm just seeing a common scenario here, whether it's the belief systems you grew up with, whether mm-hmm. it's the church that you've always known with your friends and family that you've always yeah. had and your social groups, or it's your marriage. Like um, Emily, you, you got married at like what, like 19, 20? I was 22. 22. Okay. And so there's always the unknown and, and what are people going to think of me? How am mm-hmm. I going to be perceived? Mm-hmm. How am I going to live out there? And yeah. anyway, go ahead, John. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you, um, when we were talking about releasing or, or looking at our suffering and there were some, some notes I made, I was like, you said, I'm not denying my sufferings and hurts. I'm grateful for them. Mm-hmm. They've served their purpose. I now release them. And I'm like, that's such a beautiful thing because it's like people always either want to hold on or let go. But you're like saying, okay, you've got to allow those sufferings to change you. Then you let go of them because they've served their purpose. Well, my, my wife, Lisa, is a palliative care nurse. Hmm. She works in a hospice house. Um, okay. There's 10 beds wow. and she helps people die. Wow. And, um, you know, she's been there for many, many years and I just hear stories. And you yeah. read, you know, you read articles about the five things people wish on their deathbed or whatever. Mm. And it's never, it's never that they regret having done something. It's always yeah. regret not doing something. Mm. And they re- many realize, why did I hang on to that grudge first? Yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't fucking matter yeah. anymore. Yeah. And what, like, does it really matter now? No. I, I say, even with yeah. my, um, even with my, my my own um family and my dad and and all that and they're they're getting up there and you know they're Mm -hmm. experiencing health issues and i've had to go home a couple of times and help dad out and stuff and you know uh, dad and i were like that often and and he softened in his old age and i'm I'm, and i look back just yesterday i went for or this morning when i was going for my run i was like why did i waste so much time being so angry Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah. anger is legitimate. I get it. And, and their anger is <laughs> necessary and healthy and all that. I totally, well, well, I don't want to live in it. It's mm-hmm. like it just a toxic brew that I don't want to live in for the rest of my life. So mm-hmm. that's, that's what I'm talking about with like Sophia and, and all this kind of thing is, 
and you know I've, I've been I've been hurt by a lot of people and it's like on my deathbed I it, you know if I'm fortunate enough to have a deathbed and you know yeah. have some time to even reflect I want to be able to be free of all that shit right so mm-hmm. something you hit on along those lines is that is the issue of rejection mm-hmm. which if if anyone um has ever tried to do anything that they felt was true to themselves and not true to the the group you've experienced rejection you're walking alone or it feels alone by yourself in that moment you're going somewhere that hasn't been going you're standing on the edge of the cliff and you said every rejection came as a painful surprise and it almost led to a death but you then you realize that these deaths really were births can you speak to that and also the idea of moving away from the center the center yeah the center sorry um yeah i mean i've i think when you you get, you all know this already <laughs> but when you uh what what's the i i, I did a, a little meme last year what, what was it that i said just one sec it was really good <laughs> hey i have this moment every day a, huh <laughs> I have this moment of trying to remember a meme every day. I love that. It was really <laughs> yeah, good. It's my own I, meme. I, I totally think that too. I'll come up with something. I'll write it down and then I'll read it later and be like, whoa, that's amazing. Who wrote that? Oh, it was me. <laughs> oh, here it is. Here it is. I found it. It's, it's rare to be authentic and accepted in the same room. Wow. And, and that's my experience. I like that. Like you have a choice and you literally have to make this choice every day. Am I going to be authentic or am I going to be accepted? Now, if uh, sometimes when you're authentic, you can be accepted. That, and that's a wonderful experience. But when you, it, you have to choose, that's yeah. a choice you have to make every day. And that's a choice I make every day. Mm-hmm. And I, I know I'm aware of it when I, when I'm going to click that post button or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, or make that comment or, or write that, thing or draw that cartoon it's a choice every day am i going to be accepted yeah or authentic oh my god Mm. last week you posted one and i've got to order a print of it i've got i've ordered a few prints and um but i've got to order this print for sure it has jesus on the cross and it says he shouldn't have gotten political Mm -hmm. oh yeah Mm. i love that wow i david what is what is this idea um i know in my own life and this might just be the artist journey or something what is it within you where it's almost like a wave crashing? You, you put yourself out there, people come around you, you feel accepted. It scares the hell out of you. Mm-hmm. You feel like maybe I'm not being authentic enough. I'd be a little more authentic. I lose all the friends or I don't lose the friends, but you know, yeah. I start to lose them in a way and then I have to start all over again. And yeah. I don't want, I don't want to be a part of <clears throat> cycles or unhealthy cycles, but at the same time I have to be authentic. Hmm. Yeah, well, you, you got to, and I tell this to everybody, you know, I tell this, I, I would say the same thing to you folk who are coaching or blogging or, you know, doing stuff on Facebook or whatever. You, you got to keep that choice in front of you. I have, a, I have a thing in my study, it's a little science, it's help people. Mm-hmm. So every day, that's what I think. I'm going to help people today. I love that. And, and then, um, and, and then you, you do it authentically. You try to be authentic. Yeah. And I can't worry about, I, I really honestly, guys, I cannot worry about who's mm-hmm. going to like it and who's not going to like it or who I'm going to mm-hmm. lose or who I'm going to gain. I can't, I can't, I can't think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I do enjoy watching, you know, yeah. my Instagram account grow followers. It's fun, but I can't count on that as a gauge for how authentic I'm being or effective I'm being. If, mm-hmm. if I allow my brain to go to the place of how am I perceived, it will shut me down immediately. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Can I comment on that real quick? So this has <laughs> literally been my like journey. And so when I started showing up online, I came out with like, some people are going to really, really like this. And some okay. people are going to really hate it. And I was bracing myself for the rejection. And then the rejection came, right? My family rejected yeah. me. Friends rejected me. The church rejected me, right? Because I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, almost in that martyr mentality. And then when I got to the point, and this was just recently, like I had a really big shift recently where, and like you said, David, 
what is my purpose here? And it's not to glorify me and it's not for yeah. people to like me and it's not for me to be yeah. famous. It is, I am here to give, I'm here to serve, I'm here to share love. And then all of a sudden it doesn't fucking matter who likes you and who doesn't like you because it's not about you. And so yeah. the rejection hurts. Like, it's not like the rejection. It's not like we're all just like tough and we're, we don't care. It hurts and it's sad, but you grieve it for what it really is because people that reject you never really accepted you for who you truly are. So as you step into that, like, I don't look at my journey as cyclical like that. Like, I just look at it like I am bringing people in who want love and who, who are love, right. I'm in alignment with that. And it doesn't, I'm not counting who I lost and counting who, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> because that would fuck with my head. And, and so when yeah. you can get yeah. to the point where you make it less, my goal, I literally just said this yesterday. My goal is to make it less and less about me every single day. I want to be less judgmental. I want to be less critical. I want to be yeah. more because that if you zoom out and you look at it, you're like, we're here as for such a short period of time. And I want to share as much love as possible while I'm here. Like nobody yes. gives a shit when I die. If I embarrass myself, nobody gives a shit yeah. when I die. It's like sure. the impact you're going to make is how authentic and authentic to me is being connected with the divine. It's being connected with source. And it's like, I, that's all I, that's all I am that I'm, I'm as dumbed down as that. Right. And then it's like, it, it's so freeing. And then it's like, who gives a shit? I'm such, I'm at such an interesting place with this because it's like when I um, was releasing music um, a while back, you know, one of my kids said to me, you need to release it under a different name. And I came up with this idea of Bridge Live Watt, which is basically a character or, well, it's a persona anyways, but the idea is to bridge. I'm building bridges. And so my place with like rejection is like, I don't experience a whole lot of rejection for what I do because I have a like a gentle manner of kind of teasing the elephant in the room and it's just kind of my style it's be less gentle like, sorry be be less gentle be less gentle. <laughs> well it, it's funny though because like even you know and I get away with ridiculous things like yesterday or a couple days ago I was um kind of mocking the whole idea of liberty which you know, could make some Americans angry because they like liberty. But I was like, does this mean I'm not allowed to lick peace people's faces at Walmart anymore? <laughs> and it was kind of this ongoing thing for a bit. And I'm like, I don't know if anybody understood what I was trying to do, <laughs> but it's kind of fun. But it's like, I, yeah, that idea of rejection, it's like, I am going to experience that from time to time, but I'm at a different place with it because I haven't really been extreme I just kind of tease things a little bit and just push the envelope a little bit. It's like, yeah. it's like I'm bending the cage just a little bit. For but people. if you're being authentic and that's what comes through, mm -hmm. then yeah. good. Like for me, yeah. my, what comes out when I'm being authentic is like, I'm yelling and I'm like, Fuck! Yeah. like, that's just what comes through because that's what yes. lights me up. I like am so yes. passionate. And so yeah. giving myself freedom to do that, knowing it's going to probably turn a lot of people off but like being more gentle, it's just, so I don't know. I mean, I yeah. think if it, it's just a journey. And so if what comes out of you is gentleness, then beautiful. Well, it's so, like an art, right? And it's yeah. like, I need people like you to inspire me. So I know how to push the envelope a little yeah. bit. Right. And, so, and I need people like you to bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, so, I mean, just to recap, we're, we're talking about all of us coming to a point in life where we wake up. Uh, Richard Rohr talks about the first half and the second half of life. The first half, you're building your ego container yeah. and who I am and who I think I am, who others think I am, who I Not want that. others to think I am. <laughs> and, then the, and then as you move into the second half, which he usually says is somewhere in your 30s or so, or late 30s, I guess, you, you start to say, what was the point of even creating the container in the first place? <laughs> so my question for you, David, or everybody is, um, for some people, this conversation is not going to resonate. And, they, and it might not be an age issue. It mm -hmm. might just be it doesn't resonate. And my question yeah. is, what does it take? Because I've learned one thing is you can't make people change, unfortunately. No. And, um, but so what, what, I guess the question is, do some people not? Or do some people not question the container? Do some people not change? Do some people not come to that moment? <sighs> you know, I, um, I, I, I t totally relate to that question because um, – I 
I'm going to just essentially cut a long story short. I grew up in the church and Christianity and everything. And I, I felt I had an option. I could go the triumph route or the humility route. I felt Mm. those are two legitimate. Well, those are two existent um, pathways in Christianity is the triumphal route, you know, where you are in control, you believe in miracles you name it and claim it. It's the health, wealth, <laughs> gospel, power, hour. Yes. And, and, you know, everything's, God is good and everything's going to fuck the virus. We're going to go yeah. to church and, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's the other route. And, 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 oh, and this route too is you're the, you're the well-dressed pastor with the great smile and you bring yeah. in the offerings and you, you, all yeah. this stuff, right? And that's a legitimate pathway in in the church or Christianity. The the other one is the humility, you know, the, um, uh, such a worm as I, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, die to self daily, crucify the self daily, you know, and the wounded healer and, you know, all this. So that's the path I chose. So binary. Yeah, no, but that's the path I chose. Those two don't mix. Yeah. And mean. neither sounds good to me right now. <laughs> well, so I chose the humility one where yeah. death mm-hmm. to self. There's no mm-hmm. I. There's mm-hmm. just Christ mm-hmm. lives in me. I don't I don't live, just mm-hmm. Jesus. And you know, all this whole humility thing. And that that fucked me up, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That fucked me up. That reminds me of Watchman Nee. Oh, and Watchman Nee is a yeah. huge yeah. hero in that whole yeah. you know, concept and Henry Nowen and you know. Thomas Merton and the mystics and all that, all this kind of stuff. Right. And, uh, um, they're all, all those folk have great team, things to say. I mean, Thomas Merton, Henry now, they're all heroes of mine, but, um, I, I took it way too seriously, man. I was yeah. all in, I dove in the deep end of that and, and it really messed me up in terms of who am I? What do I want? Mm-hmm. But should I have money? Yeah, but yeah. I, yes. I take care of my house. Yeah, you know, all but this kind of if, crazy stuff. If yeah. Thomas was here, you know, I want to live a long and healthy life mm. and prosper. Mm-hmm. Right, but yeah. I, I think <laughs> I, 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 all these things really, really mess me up. So mm-hmm. um, that's why um, this whole thing about freedom is freedom to be me, freedom to be a yeah, yeah, freedom yeah. To want and desire, yeah. And, Stuff, so. that's freedom to be you like within but it's like freedom to be you within community like there's something there's something there like it's almost tethered you know because it's like because i i always think in terms of music and i'm always thinking like me as the bass player there's so much is too much bass right yeah. or there's such thing as too much bass and so i'm always like thinking it's like i got the freedom to be me but how much me do i bring to this situation and I, I find that such an interesting concept because you've got the people who are like self-sacrificing, martyr, and they're yeah. unhealthy. And then you got the person who is like so dominating in the situation. They're the alpha male. And I'm like, I, both of those people are terrible and they're unhealthy. And it's like finding that balance. And maybe that balance is different for each one of us. Well, but David, I, what I hear you saying is you took your zeal and your striving in the church. And then you mm. tried to apply it to some sort of spiritual idea you had in your mind. Right. And what yours, and I think what, if I think what Thomas Merton would say is that it's the striving. That's the problem. Whether it's striving to be better, yeah. striving to be spiritual, striving mm. to be X, Y, Z. It's that whole movement instead of just trusting and allowing yourself to be. Right. And I think, and, and I think growing up in the church and, and in, in those circles, it was always um, a fear of just to be. Yeah. you're never okay as you are no right yeah and uh you know the whole community thing that that's really a, an important point because i i really agree that um th- th- here here was the operating question for me as a pastor and i really really love community and try to build healthy community and all that in fact i, I have an online community where we really try to practice healthy healthy community standards. And, and, and so for me, a healthy community is one that wrestles with this question. How can I be f- free without violating your freedom? Mm-hmm. Yes. So how that, yeah. if, if a community wrestles with that, how can I be authentic without violating your authenticity? 
-hmm. How can I be free without violating your freedom? Mm -hmm. If a community Mm -hmm. wrestles with that question, I think it's, Here's where, here's a really good point to that though, is is being able to personally set your own standards and boundaries and holding to them. So nobody can cross the line and take my freedom away from me. I own that. And if I can stand strong in that, then when I come up against you and I say, hey, fuck you, David. And you're like, that is not an appropriate way to talk to me. I'm like, yes, sir. Because you've just established your boundaries and what you accept and allow in your life. And so this is where I hate when people make it other people's responsibility to establish the community establish your own goddamn community establish (laughs) it within yourself and then say this is what i'm here for and this is what i allow and i am more than open to sharing this with other people but like I've had to do that in my relationship. I've had to do it with my kids. I'm like, absolutely not. You may not talk to me that way because that's Mm -hmm. disrespectful. And Mm -hmm. I'm establishing the community of my home, the standards of my home out of love because if I allow it, that means that my standards are low. And so- I think there's this concept of like coming together and we're responsible for each other. And it's like this codependent mushy nonsense. And it's like, get your own temple right. And then you have something to offer and then you have something to bring into a really strong and cool community. Mm. That's it's like mor- yeah. moral ecology. You're setting a certain moral ecology for yourself. Yeah, and I and get to decide. it kind of interacts with someone else's moral ecology. Mm-hmm. I got that term from Second Mountain I'm reading right now. I'm like, so good. I love that <laughs> term. Like, I like words. They're great. <laughs> but it's Second- exactly what it is. You get to, like, nobody gets to decide for me. And as soon as you're putting it on other people to decide for you, you become the victim to them, right? And so yeah. all of a sudden, we're a victim to everybody around us. We're a victim to the church, to the government, to our community. And it's like, you're ta- you're you totally let your power go and that's and that power is with that within us and it's just getting the balls to stand up for yourself and really coming from a place of love for for yourself yep so as we wrap up what does all this mean in terms of COVID 19 oh god why? <laughs> Kevin, why why because it's um because it's relevant today there's a lot of people in fear there's a lot of people with anxiety there's a lot of unknowing moving in the next month or two so how does this apply what what's even the point well let's talk about community how it applies Mm. you know what you can have a hundred people 99 can be socially responsible and and physically distance themselves from everybody it takes one jerk yeah to to infect everyone who says, yeah. oh, this is all fake news. This is all yes. a lot to, to yep. impeach the president. And they'll ruin the whole community because yep. they are not respecting other people's boundaries. Mm-hmm. There's an application for this it. This is yeah. interesting for me, though, because that p- brings in an element of other people's actions being completely out of your control. So I like, yeah. I was running on a community trail the other day because I felt comfortable doing that. And I had my family with me. And it was a eight foot wide trail and I was running. And so I was within six feet of the people that were passing me, but I chose that because I felt okay with it. Right. Somebody yelled at me to be six feet away from them. And I'm like, Mm. bitch, why are you in public? (laughs) You are choosing to be on. There's only, you cannot physically be eight, six feet away from people on that trail. And so that's where it's like, you're putting that responsibility on somebody else when you should just stay home. And so I wasn't, in my opinion, being socially irresponsible because I felt like I was keeping a distance. I was, there wasn't very many people on the trail. I was outside, you know? And so I think there's this point of like, it is completely out of our control what other people do. And so when we harp on it and we get so pissed off and we get so like bossy, it's like, it's just out of our control. And yes, Mm -hmm. there are people that need a reality check. Well, they're going to get their reality check when their dad dies of the virus or, you know what I'm saying? Or like it's hitting everybody. And, um, so I don't know. I just think for me, I've been able to step back and be like, I respect your approach. I respect your approach. And here's my approach. And the rest is just out of our control. We're dealing with something that's totally out of our control. Yeah. Yeah. I also would say you probably had adequate ventilation. Yeah because of the fresh air yeah I'm I speaking as a hygienist I'm not worried yeah. yeah I wasn't worried and I felt like it was a 
maybe people would disagree that I should just be in my home. I don't know. I don't agree. I'm going to go outside. Like, How? And it's like, what, two seconds of exposure? If there was any exposure? But I wasn't licking them. Yeah. I, was li- I wasn't no. even talking to them. I was <laughs> you over were not, here. You were not Walmart <laughs> licking their faces. No, no, so. I wasn't. And, but, but then there was an element, too, where I was like, I need to start respecting other people's fear. Not that yeah. I feel the same fear, but it is unkind yeah. of me to go up to somebody on the trail and get, get all up in their yeah. business because they don't feel comfortable with that. So it's finding the balance of doing mm-hmm. my own thing within what I feel comfortable with while also respecting other people's boundaries and respecting, yeah. you know, so, um, there's, there's definitely a dance there, but it's just yeah. like, fuck man, you can't, you, there, you can't do it right. Like there is no right way to, I'm not staying in my house. I am going outside. I will die. I'm not going to do that. I think you're allowed to go survive. outside though still, aren't you? Like yeah, the, I hope. Well, yeah. I, I'm going to go ride my bike because I think the trails are still open. I hope yeah. they are because yeah. that is my release, a park or yeah. the bike exactly. with no people around. Yeah. So Yesterday, Lisa and I went to a nearby beach and we just stayed in our car because there were people out. And yeah. stuff. But it was really neat. We saw a, a tailgate party going on where yeah. there was all these, there was about, I don't know, 12 cars or trucks or whatever, or SUVs. And they were all, all the rear ends were parked in towards the inside. And they were about 20 feet apart. And they were just sitting on their tailgate, just, I don't know, having coffee or whatever, and just kind of talking to each other. Like, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I think something we're not really thinking about though is online community. Cause it, it feels like the bulk of our community right now is now online. So mm-hmm. how does this pertain to maybe boundaries on social media interaction? Like, <clears throat> yeah, I have an online community and things are just going on as it always has. Nothing's yeah. changed. Good. But it's really, really cool. Um, the kind of interaction that takes place there. It's always been that way. And this COVID-19 hasn't affected that at all. So mm-hmm. it's good. Yeah. So as we finish up, I want to hear each person's opinion about how is this going to change you and how do you hope it changes the world? Oh, I like it. <laughs> it can be deep are, or it can just be talking, pragmatic. You're talking about the book? Oh, no, no. talking about um, COVID-19? COVID. Okay. All right. <laughs> I can what's, go first. So what's I the silver think- lining? So for me, the way that I look at this whole thing is it's been a really beautiful time for me. It's been a really beautiful time for my family. Um, It's been, everything's quiet. And I, and I, David, I shared with you my vision of like everything, everything's so quiet. And I'm like, what a beautiful time of rest for the earth. I really feel like mother earth is healing herself. I mean, the ocean is blue again, the canals are blue again, the, and you're seeing greenery. I mean, really it is such a healing time for the earth, but also for us. And so I look at it like people aren't able to hide behind the busyness anymore and they're not able to hide behind the chaos. They've been forced to um, calm down and, and really reflect. So I have shifted a lot just from this because I've really been faced with a lot of fears. Like I talk about, I can't come from a family of the doomsday preppers. And so that was a legit fear of mine. When people started going to the grocery store, I was like, the time has come. This is it. We, <laughs> this is what we've been ra- waiting for. Right. Where's and Kurt I, Cameron? Yeah. <laughs> so I, ha- I watched that in church as a kid, like this fear is real. Um, and so it's just, it hit me and I really had to process. I'm like, you know what? No, I am safe. And I am pulling this, this stability and the strength and this peace and this joy from within me. It doesn't, the outside circumstances don't affect it. So I've grown a lot in my connection with the divine and my connection with God, because I'm like, this is where my peace comes from. It doesn't come from whether there's toilet paper, it doesn't come from whether there's sickness. And so, uh, I've just, I just have felt like I've grown in, in that. And I think it's a, I think it's, really forcing people to face a lot of the reality. And I really feel like nothing is new here. Everything is as it's always been. And we're just seeing it more clearly now. Um, so to me, it's a, it, it, there's suffering. There's a lot of suffering and there's not no downplaying that. Um, and, but in the suffering, there's also so much beauty. So, yeah. How about That's you, John? It. I think for me, more than anything else, it's like learning to be in the moment and not thinking too much about the big picture. And I'm, I'm a big picture person. Like I love looking at, you know, how does this affect this and how does this affect this? And 
And I, I could sit and do that, but like right now is a really bad time to be doing that because we can't even see like more than a week in advance right now. Yeah. And so learning like, okay, so I think I know what I'm doing Monday. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at right now. And I'm like, and I'm, I'm, you know, coming to a place where I can be at peace with that. And I'm sticking to my routines. Um, I have this kind of like once a week, I take what, you know, my Sabbath and my Sabbath is where I'm not out there, you know, on social media, getting all my ideas out there and everything like that. And so I'm sticking to that. So I still have kind of a rhythm of a week, even though things are so different. Um, but yeah, like living in the moment, I, I think it's just such a big thing. And I want to encourage people to live in the moment, you know, and it's like, enjoy your house. I mean, mm. wow. Like I have a house. This is amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Be that. grateful. Gratitude. Practicing gratitude and being in the moment, I guess, mm -hmm. would be where I'm at right now. David? Yeah, you know what? Life hasn't really changed that much for me. I, I Like I tell people, I pretty much live the life of a hermit anyway. I, I'm at home. <laughs> but but the, the thing is, uh, when we want to get together with people, we get together with friends and, you know, we'll go to a our favorite little restaurant or pub or whatever and have some beer and wings or fish tacos or, you know, whatever. And, I miss that. So, mm. and you know, I've heard a lot of stories and hear a lot of stories. My wife being a nurse, she's all up in the news and everything. And just the heartbreaking stories of um, people who are dying and they, their family can't even be with them in the same room and yeah. having to yeah. die alone. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, just for me, it's not taking life for granted, not taking yeah. the lives of others for granted. Uh, yeah. You know, this is life is precious and love the one you're with and mm -hmm. um you know love your figure out ways to love your friends and family and, <laughs> and, and try not to have any grudges and 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 another thing for me too is trying to figure out a way like i said before there's such a thing as healthy anger but man i i can't live there and there's a lot to be angry about right now in the world and um so it's for me, it's a spiritual practice and how to, you know, yeah, there, mm. there's this idea Not of, of that anger. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the more, the more, the more I look at like uh, Zen and, and even mystical teachings and stuff, it's almost like how much of this is an illusion. And I know it's real in terms of the consequences. And so I don't want to make mm. light of that, but at the same time, I think it is important to realize, um, it, yeah, it's real easy to get wrapped up in that anger. And that's that when fear. you turn the news off and that's when yeah. you get off Facebook yeah. and yeah, you exactly. just go outside or you, like John was saying, like, I have a beautiful house. I have a beautiful yeah. family. I have food. Yeah. I like, there is so much to be grateful for. Yeah. And so s being able to snap yourself back out of that is. Yeah. is for me, it's getting off mm -hmm. Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I get my news. Yeah. And it's like, it's mind numbing and anger raising and, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, uh, well, no, it's, it's made off. to get a response from you. Mm -hmm. It wants a response from you or else you won't come back to it. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I told my wife this week, I said, tomorrow we're not turning on news. We're not getting on social media. We're going outside. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And we had a great That's day. Awesome. Yeah. But the, but the day after that, we got back on the news. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> well, that's kind some... of it though. It's Go like, ahead, well, I'm getting, I'm getting back into this now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like tomorrow it'll be like, I'm back on social media. Why am I doing this again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I read I somewhere hope. that kids are going to look back at this time and they're going to look at, at the COVID-19, the quarantine and mm -hmm. be like, I got to spend so much time with my family. We mm -hmm. did play board games and we went on all these hikes and I can see my kids are so happy. They're sad because they miss their friends and they're, but yeah. they are so peaceful and excited and they're loving this. And I'm like, you guys, there is so much beauty to have being forced to step back. And so yeah. again, not downplaying the suffering because that's yeah. real and that's a really, really tragic thing. Um, but, but learning to kind of come back to then the being so grateful and looking at it for, for the beauty that's there. Simple, mm -hmm. simple things. Yeah. 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 I hope people like, I, I well, hold on. I get a turn just because I'm the host doesn't Absolutely. mean I don't get a turn. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so Kevin, tell me what you think. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I hope that, um, I hope in my own life, like Emily said, 
I, I slow down, begin to see it for what it is. Like John said, I begin to live in the moment. That's always been a, a difficulty for me. I can get so anxious and so wrapped up in the what is and what and what could be. Um, and but it is funny because myself, I said, you know, I said, Lauren, my my wife, I said, I see so much peace as people coming together in this moment. And she's an Enneagram six, and she said, Really? I just see how everybody's trying to get their TP. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, it's funny how different perspectives see things. And yeah. I was probably romanticizing it a little too much, but um, I do see some of that beauty and that sense of calm and that, and, and, all, and, and, and you start to realize how much of this daily activity in your own life and in, in society is just unnecessary. It's just mm. unnecessary. I mean, some yeah. of it, I'm not trying to make light of the, the times that it is and people can't do and things like that, but there's so much of our hurried system that is just an effort to just keep you dissatisfied and keep you coming back for more and to keep, keep you, you engaged, keep you numb. Mm -hmm. And so my hope is that people, I, I do believe something's going to stick. And I asked this on my Facebook yesterday. I said, what habits do you think will stick? And I love the responses I got. And, and time and time again, people said, spending time with family, everything mm. we just talked about, they want that to stick. Yeah. And, and I remember after swine flu, uh, President Obama uh, fist bumped like a, a world leader and it was all over the news because you, you know we didn't shake hands then and ever since then I washed my hands every day I mean I became almost a freak about washing my hands because of the swine flu and so I know that this moment's going to have an even greater impact I hope we question yeah. our our um, economics I hope we question why Boeing can go under after one week but the waitress is supposed to have six months of savings. I hope we question the whole game of capitalism. I hope we question our society, our standards, our morals. I hope we, I hope we question everything. And I hope we realize yeah. how much of it is just to waste and how much of it and what's important. Yeah. Awesome. Can I say one more thing? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? No, no, no. Go. Oh, I, I was, I was really moved yesterday. There was some things came across on Facebook and stuff and, um, I, I was actually got really emotional about, yeah, have you guys seen the, um, where at the, when the nurses are changing shifts at the hospital and everybody's clapping outside, yeah. hearing the nurses? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, and then I saw, I read a story yesterday where a, a factory in Tunisia, every worker, 150 workers agreed to go under quarantine and live in the factory just so that mm. they keep producing 50,000 masks per day. Wow, and, and um, they've agreed to do it for three months. I mean, wow. I mean, there are amazing stories, amazing people in the world. Yes, and um, uh, that really opened my heart. Mm -hmm. Not to be so yeah. angry or bitter mm -hmm. about yeah. these crooked, wealthy people yeah. in the world, <laughs> yeah, and politicians um, yeah. sending 150 broken ventilators to California kind of stuff really pisses me off. But mm -hmm. to see these little stories of normal people, mm -hmm. the two Sicilian twins playing the violin, uh, uh, have you seen that? Uh -huh. yeah. Check it out. Like it's just, there's a lot of wonderful people in the world and to rejoice about that. Yeah. And it's funny about the politics stuff, because it's like, what are you guys surprised? Are you surprised that Donald Trump is a greedy <laughs> motherfucker? Like if you're surprised, then you needed the reality check, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. so it's just, everything is as it's always been. And so the yeah. people that are coming, that are being, are giving and sharing are the people that were really in that space before and yeah. the people that are greedy and they're only out for themselves. And it's like, karma's a bitch. Mm. Like, I hope know? so. It I is. had a friend uh, say, Kevin, you know, if you took all the world's wealth and you equally distributed, a, 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 you know, to every person, give it a month, and those greedy motherfuckers that once had all of it yeah. would have all of it again. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. true. Yeah. Human it's, nature, it hey? It is. Yeah. True, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, Absolutely. I but do anyway. like that though. Look for the helpers, mm -hmm. right? Mr. Rogers, look for the helpers. Right. That's yeah. Good way. That's beautiful. And the long yeah. arc of justice, but God, it seems long right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get off Twitter, David. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here today. I hope there Thanks, was, I, I, I only need one person to have seen this and say, that was yeah. great. I'm glad yeah. I watched it. That helped me. I enjoyed it. It will. And if nobody does, it helped me. So let, yeah, let me, I, yeah. I had fun. Selfish. This is great. This Love is it. great. Thanks for doing it, Kevin. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. See you soon. All right. Yeah. Bye.